The Bike Riders is directed by Jeff Nichols. It stars Austin Butler, Jody Comer, Tom Hardy, and among others. And this story, it deals with the... It's set in the 60s where you got a bike rider gang known as the Vandals that's run by Tom Hardy. And they're living that non-conventional style where they like to, you know, run around, party, you know, hang out and stuff. And you you have... Uh, that's it's being ran by Tom Hardy's uh, president, who's the president of the group, and then you also got Austin Butler, who's Benny, who's the rebel of the group, who always just loves to ride his bike everywhere, and then he meets uh, Jody Comer's character, who's not really used to the lifestyle, and they get together, and it deals with pretty much the the rise of them train going through their through the years, uh, how life unfolds with them uh, through. The, as with the club and then on top of that with a lot of the changes that happen when there's another certain character that comes across in the story that uh, takes things into into a different direction and I'll leave it there because it there's some uh, there's a major spoiler I can't really get into detail with but essentially things turn for the worse as it goes along and it becomes a lot of uh, conflict between Jody Comer not Jody Comer's character uh, wanting what's best for Austin Butler to really decide uh, to really feel like if whether he chooses the club or her on certain things, along with some other events that take place as the story unfolds with the club. Now, here's a little backstory. Now, this movie was directed by Jeff Nichols, who I've actually heard some good things about with some other films he's directed, including Mud and Midnight Special and stuff. I've got to check those movies out because I heard they're really good, and he often works with Michael Shannon in a lot of these movies, and coming from the trailers, it got me interested because... It really makes you want to go check out some of these other types of bike mo biker movies that we've got in the past, like with Easy Rider or that one from with Marlon Brando from back in the day. You know, and I, I gotta admit, I, I do have an admiration for bike uh, motorcycles myself. Um, my dad, he's actually a big fan of uh, riding them all the time. He's got one, and so this is definitely the kind of movie that my dad would definitely love to check out if he ever gets a chance to see it, because uh, it's definitely it fits his t type of move. And everything, but I just also really got interested based off of the, uh, you know, the the setting it was taking place with, with the whole bike riding stuff, and then the cast involved too, especially with Tom Hardy and Austin Butler, who's been on a pretty good streak so far in the last couple of years with Elvis and uh, Dune Part Two, and now this, and Jodie Comer, who I've I've really enjoyed with some of her early movies, especially with uh, Free Guy and The Last Duel and everything, and so. My expectations were pretty good with this, but this was actually a film that was actually supposed to come out last year, but got delayed for a while after, uh, I think some stuff happened like during the strike that happened last year, where it pretty much got delayed and there was some other, and it got acquired by a different distributor, and so I'm glad, I'm glad the movie actually got its uh, release here in the summertime, because it definitely has that kind of setting uh, fit for it, and after upon seeing it, I can say, man, this movie was really great. Um, it's got some little minor things that hold it back that I wish that it could have really done more with. But for the most, but for everything that I really loved with this story, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. And so to get my pros out of the way, the cast in this were all fantastic. Um, Austin Butler continues to shine like every movie that I've seen him in so far, especially in this one where he plays the rebel of the group that, from what I've heard, also has like kind of a James Dean kind of feel going for it. And I could see that because... If you've seen movies with James Dean where he likes to be that kind of rebel, you can definitely see the similarities with that and with uh, the way Austin Butler plays with his character in this. And I think that if they ever do like a like a re, like a remake or any kind of like biopic with uh, James Dean, I could definitely see uh, Austin Butler playing that kind of role like that in the future because he definitely has the 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 skills for it. And then Tom Hardy, what can I say? He does it great too. Um, his accent can be a little hit and miss depending on how you hear it because he is using his venom. His similar accent like he had in Venom where it seems like he really kind of struggles trying to do American accents um, a lot of the time. But it still, it still really fit the character for him because, you know, he's playing this kind of veteran that's been around the club for a while. And, and he's wanting to, his, his uh, chemistry with Austin Butler really shines through a lot of scenes where they really have that kind of like, you know, brothery type of friendship with each other and stuff and everything. And in him being pretty much like a... A role model for him, everything, and wanting him to take over and stuff. I, I really got into it, and he really shines just like he always does. And then Jodie Comer, like she's definitely like what we represent as the audience with this kind of movie, where she's pretty much being interviewed throughout the movie, and it's the way that it's edited. We're getting to see scenes where she's telling the story about stuff that's flashing back, and she really knows her part in this one. And she's a very complex character in her own right because she's not used to the way that the the stuff goes along with the club and everything. And so she's pretty much like an outsider that's really seeing the eyes, like us as the audience, pretty much seeing through everything that's been going down. 
and stuff like that. And so she was great. And then the, also the other big surprises that come in, especially Michael Shannon, I thought he was also great. You know, in this one, uh, he actually has some of the funniest parts of the movie. The way he tells this kind of story about his brother and stuff, and the way that he was trying to be in the that he tried to join an army and things like that. So the movie does have a good blend of humor throughout the movie that had me laughing at times, especially when they bring in Norman Reedus. That, funny enough, he's actually a biker in real life, so it's really fitting that he got to play in a movie like this. Um, <laughs> you know, just imagine Daryl pretty much being in the '60s, and he's pretty much you know being a guy that's you know that's just wanting to have fun and stuff and get all crazy at times. You, so, But I do have kind of a pro-con with that because I feel like they, they could have been really using a lot more with them two alone, especially some of the other ones that we get thrown in there. Like some of the other supporting casts I feel like could have been used more prominently, but when they are on screen, them two are really, the red, all the gang are really great to see and, and have fun with uh, throughout, especially this other guy that they, they call a cockroach, I thought was a lot, a lot of fun. And so there's that. And then in the way that the movie plays along with them, tr with the the bikers trying to keep their, their club going and everything, and a lot of the changes that happen, I found myself really engaged in where it was going, especially when we get to see some other conflict that takes place later on in the film that involves where the biker club is trying to hold on with some of the newcomers that come in. And things can pretty much go south as it goes along, like you kind of see in the, like, like some of the trailers have kind of have uh, spotted. And the other thing too is definitely the, the sound editing where you hear the bikes go on, where you hear the bikes revving and stuff, and then you also have the music that plays during the times. The production design is all top notch, and the cinematography is really outstanding with a lot of the summer feel that it's going for. It definitely tells a great emotional tale to it as well because there's a great art that involves with uh, Austin Butler's character that I'm not going to go into spoilers, but it essentially has a good theme of him pretty much not crying, and it comes into play later on in the film that I found myself really emotional with. Um, and so there's that. And then talk about some like pretty brutality stuff because when it does show some of the uh, stuff that's on screen, it doesn't get overly brutal, but when it does, I can definitely see like some of the, the, the stuff they go through in this movie, like some of the beatdowns and stuff like that, it gets pretty intense at times. Um, so there's that. And then if I had to get into any kind of minor cons, what we'll to say is that the movie could have run a little bit longer with exploring some stuff that we didn't really get to see fully of. Like, I appreciate that it's going to go for a more grounded approach because this, does, this doesn't really take a Sons of Anarchy level where it's trying to, you know, have it where they're constantly killing people and stuff like that. It really takes itself into a more grounded approach where the, the club is kind of doing some stuff that they're really not supposed to as far as legal-wise. But it still does it in a way that I've, I've still bought because the whole point was that they're, they're trying to be pretty much a level-headed type of organization. And it's not until shit goes down later on in the film where things start to really take a spin uh, for the worse on some stuff. And I appreciate that the movie doesn't take that cliche type of route. I could have seen more with it, and I, I will say... As a missed opportunity, they could have explored more with some stuff that, you know, seems like it could have had a more fitting uh, purpose or, you know, and also explore some other characters throughout the movie, especially Michael Shannon and some other ones that are part of the club to really navigate more with. And that's why I feel like the movie could have, you know, went on a longer running time. But for what we get, though, it still worked to its advantage. And there's definitely some stuff that I feel like did seem a little underdeveloped, especially this other character they did come into as well that comes into play. But... Because I also felt like it, it just really seemed like when they bring this character in, it's like you already know how it's going to go down with how it plays out, and it becomes very predictable as I was already when they introduced this character and stuff. But overall, I still had a really fantastic time with this movie, and it's going to be, it'll probably at least be on my best of the year, maybe probably at least on an honorable mention. With that, I'm going to give the movie a phenomenal grade on, I'm going to give the movie a low phenomenal grade on the film Freeze Meter. And so, for those of you who have also seen The Bike Riders, uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next review. I'll see you later.